G'day, I'm Brad from our Australia trip. And in today's video, I've got something a little bit different to our usual content. I've got a review and it's got to do with our three-way fridge. So we've tested these products over the last two months. And if you wanna see an install and a review of the products, um, stick with it. And if you've got a three-way fridge, I think it can help you out. So we're coming into a South Australian summer. It's gonna be really hot. And I saw a company on Facebook called Clevercool sell these modifications that you can make to your fridge to keep it cooler. I've got all the bits and pieces here. I've got these three fans which are going to go on the outside external vent and I've got this little one that's going to go on the internal vent. So it's all 3D printed plastic. Uh, it looks really high quality and it's supposed to keep your caravan fridge a lot cooler, your internal temperatures a lot cooler by expelling the hot air out of the vents at the back. So this is the internal fridge fan and what this does is it clips on to your fins at the back of your fridge. If you've got an absorption style fridge, that's what this kit is made for, to expel the heat and to circulate cool air. So yeah, this will clip onto your fins and if you've got a freeway fridge, you'll notice that it usually ices up in one spot and rather than concentrating all that cool air in that spot, this thing will do its best to disperse that cool air throughout the fridge, making it more efficient and cooling your entire fridge. And here we have the external fridge vent kit. So this is two parts, but it will join together when it clips onto the vents. And what this system does is it expels the hot air from your, um, the top of your fridge and gets that air, hot air out and draws cool air in. So that's where you want your efficiency, at the top where the coil runs into your fridge and that's where the cool air is made. It's a very complex system. Um, of gases and oxygen and heating. So um, yeah, this is supposed to improve the efficiency of it. The last piece of the main package is this here, which is a smart hygrometer. Our hygrometer is used to measure the temperature and the humidity. And the beauty of this is the log system I can use to read historical data. So when I go to test this on a couple of really hot consecutive days, I'm gonna run the fridge with the fans off and I'm also gonna run the fridge with the fans on to see what the temperature difference is. And that should also help you in deciding whether this system is right for you and your fridge. The beauty of this kit is Clevercool provide literally everything you need to do the job. Apart from a few tools like some crimpers or a soldering iron, um, the kit has everything. In regards to wiring and wire management, um, connections, etc., cable ties even, like it's got everything. And there's also really detailed instructions depending on what you're installing. So I've got an instruction booklet here for the remote control. I've got an instruction booklet here for the fan to suit the external vents. And I've also got an instruction manual for the fan for the internal vents as well. So that's great and it's all printed out in color. So it's super easy to read and very detailed. So it's pretty hard to get this wrong. I'd already found a 12 volt source in the fridge and ran the cables for that. So all I really need to do now is plug it in. Now every fridge is gonna be different and where you get your power source from is gonna be different for you. If you're not confident in finding a 12 volt source, it's gonna be a very simple job for your auto electrician to do. Just give you a quick brief rundown on how the fridge actually works. So what we've got in here, we've got ammonia gas and what happens to that ammonia gas, it runs down in this pipe. This is gonna be a very brief description of it and I'm not a fridge expert but I, I do have a very sim basic understanding of how it works. So the ammonia gas runs down through this pipe and in here is like a furnace, like a, a heating element. So there's a heating element for the gas, there's a heating element for the 12 volt and there's also a heating element for 240 volt. And the 12 volt heating element is only about this big, it's very small. The, the gas element is obviously a lot bigger and the 240 volt element is um, as big as the gas one or even bigger than the gas one. So um, in here, it heats up this ammonia. The ammonia in a gas form travels up that pipe up to the top here, up to the top here, and it runs through this pipe at the top with the radiator fins on. And so if the ambient outside temperature is really hot, that fin is going to be quite hot and it's not gonna be very efficient in cooling the gas to put, which, which in turn cools the inside of the fridge. The gas is just gonna be hot and it's gonna keep bypassing through the system. So these, these vents here 
and they're going to push a lot of cold air through this. It's going to suck it through the bottom panel and pull it out the top panel, which is going to run past this radiator and uh, yeah, hopefully cool the inside temperature of your fridge down. Okay, so we're going to start off with the external fridge fan installation. Okay, you can see up here this black finned object. That is what we want to improve the efficiency of and keep cooler because that's where the cool air runs through and the cooler that radiator is, the cooler the air is going to be that goes into your fridge. And you can see it's at the lower part of my vent. So when I mount these fans, I'm going to want to mount it on the lower section of the vent so it's closer to the fans. You can see there's, there is a couple of computer fans, there is a couple of computer fans in there already. They do work, but this is just beefing it up. Like you can see the size of these fans compared to the tiny little, I don't know, 70 mil fans that are in there. Um, it's gonna be a worthy improvement. And up here, up here is where I have tucked the cable that I installed the other day. So this is supplied by Clevercool and it's got a little connection on here that you hook into the board on here. The, the blue goes to blue. Pretty simple. So all you need is a constant positive and negative, which is what this wire is. And then that clips into your board. So should be pretty straightforward installing this. So look at that, like you can see the notches and everything just perfectly sit there. It sits quite, uh, quite nicely in there and snugly. And all I need to do is there's little holes here, here, here and here, which I need to zip tie, throw a zip tie around. There's eight positions in total. And like Royce thinks of everything at Clever Cool. He doesn't just give you black zip ties because obviously a black zip tie is gonna look pretty shocking on there and you're gonna know that something's there. But he even goes to the effort of supplying a white zip tie so it blends in. I love that. All right, so that's all the cable ties secure. The fans are all secure. Now I've just got these little pair of side cutters which are awesome if you want to clean up your cable ties which I definitely recommend you do and that way you don't cut yourself on the ends of the cable ties because these cut the, them super flush like look at that you can't even you couldn't cut yourself on that if you tried so they're relatively inexpensive and I wish I had them sooner. Just don't go cutting any of the actual cables. <laughs> and then what we do is we just connect these little tails into the control board like that simple I love how um, I just love the construction of this like you can tell everything's been thought of down to the dots on where to put your cable tie in first to make sure it's uh, mounts like nice and neatly the the finish of the plastic is super strong and rigid which is going to be perfect because this thing is going to see a fair bit of mm -hmm. vibration and, and a lot of um dust and crap so that's awesome to see the love like the labor of love that clever cool put into their products um so i was just going to test it real quick so i've just um grabbed my 12 volt cable and i've untangled it and I'm just going to run a quick bench test here. So Patsy, I'll give you the camera again. So if I plug this in, these fans should kick on. Oh, they'll need to kick on when I... I'll need to probably change some settings because the, in, the, in your uh, instruction booklet, there's a way in how to test the fans. So if I move that number one switch to test, the fans should kick on. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So they're working and they should also be a green light on. Oh, there, there it is, a blue light because I've got it on uh, manual mode. So that should turn green when it's on automatic. But there's a bunch of different modes and lights which are all here in the um, instruction manual. Okay, so we've moved on from the location at the beach and we've moved location inside the van because we're gonna now fit the internal fridge vent. And then we're gonna run this cable outside to the controller on the external fridge fans. So this one's even simpler to um, wire in. All you need to do, if you have the external kit, you just um, wire these into that. That already has some ports ready for these to go. So um, yeah, we don't really need to bugger around finding a 12 volt source. So it's pretty simple. It's got these little clips on the outsides of the fan and they just mount to the fins on the inside of the fridge 
and yeah this thing's function is to circulate the cool air throughout the fridge and I'll show you inside it's actually iced up pretty bad in the last few days so you can see up the back there there's some yeah there's some a fair amount of ice so where I'm going to locate this I'm going to locate these fans mainly on the right hand side of the vent so on the sorry on the right hand side of the fins so rather than icing up that cool air um, gets circulated through the fridge cooling everything down it depends on your fridge but a lot of these fridges have a drain hole and up the back here I have a drain hole so all I need to do is take these up and push them through the drain hole then that will come out on the outside of the van so then we can wire it into our um, control panel on our external vent yeah. okay so now it's easier to cable tie or it's easier to cable manage on this side of the vent I'd rather have a bunch of leftover cable on this side of the vent rather than um, on the inside of the fridge and I can just bundle that up here and and get keep it out of harm's way so now I've got the internal fridge power source here and I've got my external fan power source here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire the internal fan into this little connector here which goes into the main external vent um, control unit and I think I might do that inside because it's quite hot so I've, I've run the wires out the top vent where I want them I want them sort of they want to terminate here but I've grabbed a bit of extra length I'm going to run them inside the van so I don't have to be out here cooking in the heat you can wire these um, two different ways you can wire them automatically or manually Automatic means that they will only come on if the external fridge fans are on. Um, I don't really want it like that. I want to be able to just operate them manually. It's more convenient for me to um, be able to op operate them manually. So I need to use this wiring diagram instead of this one. So what's really cool about these fans is they have an inbuilt thermostat and temperature probe. So the thermostat will kick the fans on when in the manual mode, um, when the temperature inside the fridge is at three degrees Celsius or higher, and they'll turn themselves off when they get to one degree or lower, um, which is great to be able to set it and forget it and just have them run when they really need to be running. Um, but in this, it's really cool because the temperature probe um, Royce has gone ahead and given us a, a bunch of extra cables so you can move this probe around to any point in the fridge that you like and that you want to measure because um, usually this readout here this LED screen will show the internal temperature of the fridge um, so that's cool you can also change the thermostat as well to um, come on at a higher temperature or a lower temperature depending on what you got in there and what your preferences are it's all wired up now I'm getting pretty close now so I should be able to apart from cable management and tidying these cables up which I will put conduit on all that stuff and make sure that looks all nice and pretty and tidy that up but yeah I'm pretty much ready to hook everything up and together just to be as simple as actually I might connect that up first so I'm not stuffing around with it later and tidy tucked up there got the first one on and you just need to I've got the first clip on over here it's really hard to see but you can sort of bend and manipulate these um, bits of these fins to suit the vent just push it back on and um, that's on that's that's done I will be able to push it on a little bit further because this ice is stopping me from pushing it all the way on but once that melts off I'll um, be able to push it back all the way and that's actually on there nice and securely. I will run a quick test on the whole system to see if it's all working together as it should. So I've got my fans here that I installed yesterday. Pop that little sucker on there. And that clip's on there. All working. So we'll come back on the inside of the van. Here's the external vent, and I'll just switch this to the testing position on. That's mm -hmm. working, that's good. The light should be on. So there, a little blue light. That's right, so you can see it from the outside. 
turn that off to make sure that they're working independently because if I wired it up in the automatic position when this is off, the internal fan won't work. But if you come inside and have a look in here, um, so it's in the off position at the moment, I can turn the LED for the LED on or the, and the fan comes on as well. So that's the fan and LED or I can turn it off the LED and just have the fan running. Yeah, I'll just double check the thermostat set at the right temperature and I'll be good to tidy up the wires. <laughs> Once I get this external vent on, um, I will connect uh, the RJ45 that I have run through an existing hole here for the external fan switch. So rather than switching it here on the motherboard, I'll be able to mount this inside this cabinet in here and turn the fans on outside when I want to. So you just need to make sure that these wires aren't conflicting with any of the heating elements up here because there is a, a few pipes up here that get quite hot. So um, I've made sure that I've routed them away from that. And um, yeah, I'll plug them in and seal this back up. The main test is going to be how well they work. So I'm gonna wait for a couple of consecutive hot days and test it all out with that app that um, Roy sent us with the with the logs and yeah and see how much of a difference these fans make okay so this is our conclusion to if the clever cool fans work or not and i should start off by saying that the product was supplied to us for a review and we're not obligated to speak about it in a positive way and if we didn't think the products had a positive effect um, then you just wouldn't know about them so it's been just under two months since we installed the Clevercool internal and external fridge fans and I'm glad to say that we have noticed a positive difference in the fridge's cooling efficiency. So six out of the seven weeks um, we spent on gas which is where the product really makes a difference and when the fridge runs on 240 volt um, it cools very efficiently. The 12 volt function um, it's barely enough to keep the temp stable um, with or without the fans uh, and when you're traveling on a warm day so above 30 degrees um, the, the 12 volt function is barely enough to keep the fridge temperature stable. Now when we're stationary and we're off grid, we run the fridge on gas. And in the seven weeks that we tested the fans, um, we tested them in a, a wide range of conditions um, from 42 degrees all the way down to six degrees. Um, the South Australian weather patterns have been nuts. In that time, we'd monitor the fridges with the Clever Cool fans running and without them running to um, get a pretty good comparison. Those who follow along regularly know that we travel full time and with constantly changing environments means that we have constantly changing variables and thermal mass, which in our case is what amount of food we have in the fridge at any given time. So it makes it nearly impossible to test in a controlled environment. So our findings are a compilation of monitoring the internal fridge temperature relative to the ambient temperatures over a period of seven weeks. Most days we experience in these weeks um, were daytime highs between 20 and 25 degrees. Um, between six degrees, which is our lowest temperature, and 25 degrees, uh, the fridge works great on gas. Uh, even without the fans running and what we did notice when running both the internal and external fans uh, we could dial the fridge down to an 80 percent power setting um, which means that we could run the fridge more efficiently and save some gas which is a win considering we change a gas bottle every 10 days during testing we had two very similar hot weather days and during this time we took the opportunity to monitor the fridge temperatures with and without the fans running we ran the fridge on 80% power during this test and what we found was the internal difference of 2.2 degrees, recording 4.2 degrees with the fans running and 6.4 without them running. Okay, so here's the logs from our consecutive 30 degree weather days. Um, the first day, which is this area, um, December the 3rd, that is um, yeah, the first day where we tested with the fans on and December 4th, uh, was the day that we tested with the fans off. So very different graphs here. We can see I started in the morning um, around nine o'clock at I was trying to target the fridge to start at the same temperature. So I got 4.92, so five degrees um, on the first testing day when I tested with the fans on. And we started on the second testing day at about 5.2 degrees. Um, so pretty similar. Um, but you can see in the graph here, it didn't really matter what temperature is going to start at. So you can see here that the graph is very different. We've got a lot of peaks and valleys here. 
And uh, what I can put that down to is the heating element for the gas um, is just kicking on and off all day. Keep in mind the fridge is running at 80% of its power. Um, it still has an extra 20% it could use, but just in the interest of testing, I thought I'd see how it goes. Um, so I'm, I think that its target must be around 3.7 degrees Celsius um, when it's running on that 80% power, because you can see at the bottom of each valley, um, it's around that 3.7, 3.8, 3.9 target area. Um, and yeah, you can see it running pretty efficiently. It's turning on and off throughout the whole day. So we get to about uh, this here is about five o'clock and it's at four degrees. So that's keeping it within our um, range. I, I do like to run it a bit colder. I like to run it between one and three degrees, which is um, why I run it at 100% power now. I don't really stuff around with the 80% when it's hot and being in summertime, I'm running it at 100% power now. Um, so yeah, you can see that graph there is uh, very different to the second day. So this is when we have dinner, it spikes up to about 6.5 degrees. And um, yeah, as soon as you close that fridge and keep it shut, it brings it right back down and keeps it pretty stable all night. So here we start off at around 5.2 degrees. And yeah, the similar weather, but you can see here, as soon as I turn those fans off, bang, she is rising all day. And I turned it off around this point, 7.8 degrees. So there's no turning on and off of the gas heating element. I reckon that thing was just running all day trying to stay cool, um, which is also very inefficient because you're just burning twice the amount of gas as what we did on the first day. Um, but yeah, getting um, none of the cooling benefits. Once we were finished opening and closing the door for dinner time, uh, you can see I switched the fans on. So it took it quite a few hours to recover. And so by 10 o'clock it was down to the target temperature of 3.8 degrees when it's running at that 80 percent that we talked about over here so in moderately hot temperatures the fans cool the fridge much better than without um, we found up until around 35 degrees celsius the internal temperature stays relatively stable past this is where the floor of the three-way fridge becomes very apparent and the fans are just unable to account for the inefficiency of the three-way technology. And if we're not hooked up to 240 volt power, the fridge temps will rise past five degrees and up as high as seven to eight degrees. And um, on one day, the 42 degree day, uh, we traveled for three hours using the 12 volt function and saw the internal temperature of the fridge rise to just under 10 degrees Celsius. So that's not ideal when you've got a fridge full of food. So um, basically, in conclusion, um, these fans, they're not going to turn your three-way fridge into a compressor fridge. However, for a fraction of the price of a compressor fridge and the supporting electrical system, these fans are a great addition to improve the efficiency um, of your existing three-way fridge. And the clever cool fans have proved to be reliable and well-made during our months of testing, um, working exactly as they should, and we will continue to run them. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that little review. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you want to check out any of the Clever Cool products, there'll be a link for it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.